And from Hanoi, Vietnam, joining us live is Charlene Navaja. Hello, Charlene. What do you have for us today? Hi, Alma. Good to see you again. Good to see so you again. So before I begin yes. with my report, we would just like to greet Brother Angel of Irania V. Manalo a happy, happy birthday. So from all of us here in EBC SCN Bureau. So now for my headline. A teenager recovers from COVID-19, but another patient relapses. A 16-year-old Hmong girl from a village in the northern mountainous province of Hazang first tested positive on April 7. After treatment at the Dongvan District General Hospital, she has now been given the all-clear and has been moved into quarantine. But details released on Saturday have revealed another person who had previously recovered has now relapsed. So a 21-year-old man who has been studying in France and tested positive on his return to Vietnam. After recovering, he was released from the Kuchi Hospital in Ho Chi Minh City on April 14 and told to quarantine at home. But after feeling unwell, he was tested again and on April 29, results showed he was once again positive for COVID-19. According to the latest COVID-19 counts here in Vietnam, uh, we don't have any new confirmed cases, so the number still stands at the total of 270, Alma. 219 already recovered and 12 are experiencing the relapse. But on a brighter note, Vietnam makes an effort to improve international trade policy. Executive Vice President of the Japan External Trade Organization, or JETRO, Hironobu Kitagawa speaks to Vietnam news agency about the country's efforts to improve its international trade policies on the occasion of its 45th National Re Reunification Day that was yesterday. During his talk, he was asked about Vietnam's socioeconomic development achievements over the years, especially after the Doi Moi process. Doi Moi means renewal process. Since the launch of the Doi Moi policy in 1986, the economy has drastically developed, according to the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development. Vietnam's GDP jumped from $5 billion in 1986 to $245 billion in 2018. It's the highest rate in ASEAN. He said one factor for the GDP growth is the success in drawing foreign companies to the country as well as expanding experts. When asked if he has any recommendations for Vietnamese leaders to promote sustainable development, he pointed out a survey conducted last year about the business condition of Japanese companies in Asia and Oceania. The business sentiment of Japanese companies in Vietnam was the highest within ASEAN. 63.9% of respondents answered that they intended to expand. Regarding the merits of the investment environment, the answers of market scales and growth potential and political and social stability ranked top with a ratio of both increasing from the previous year. This can be interpreted as praise of the stability of policy to open its economy to other countries and its governance system. Meanwhile, respondents were most concerned about increased labor costs, 61.1% and clear policy management by local government with 42.6% and high employee turnover rate, 38.6%, which were listed at the top of the risk related to the investment environment. And lastly, when asked about how to further strengthen Japan and Vietnam's good relation, uh, Kitagawa said that both countries just need to be vividly aware of the potential of synergy born through combining the knowledge of Japan and Vietnam. With the birth of unicorns, particularly the VNG in the IT field, Vietnam's potential may be higher than that of Japan. The exchange of youth such as university students and highly skilled human resources of both countries is also important to promote synergy. Another field where synergy has the potential to be born is in the agricultural, forestry and fishery industry, the largest in Vietnam. So around 37.7% of the country's working population are engaged in these industries. However, 
as it accounts for a little under 20% of GDP by industry, greater value must be added to it. Back to you, Alma. All right. Thank you very much, Charlene, for those updates. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thank you for your time. Thank you, you too, Alma. This has been Charlene Navaja reporting live from Hanoi, Vietnam. We'll live in interesting times.